Okay, so welcome to our spoiler review of a wonderful, wonderful series, The Song of the Lioness Quartet by Tamora Pierce, something that has been around a long, long time and hopefully has influenced tons of people's childhoods because... Awesomeness? Yeah! Okay, so basic plot outline of Alana. Alana has decided that she does not want to be a lady, she wants to be a knight. So what she does is she switches with her twin brother. Her twin brother goes to the priestesses so that he can begin to learn magic and she goes in her brother's place to learn to be a knight. While she's there pretending to be a boy, which is a hard work because honestly you live with all the other pages and squires and everybody's in everybody's business. But anyways, mm -hmm. so while she's there she ends up getting a little bullied because she's small and just because some people are dicks, yeah. really. Um, and she ends up making friends with some very significant characters, especially later on, but Prince Jonathan, who is the heir to the throne um, of this land called Tortal. Um, she basically goes through her training. Um, she becomes good friends with Jonathan, Raoul, who becomes very big in other series. Um, and... Gets she, a father figure. Yeah, Miles. Miles is wonderful. We'll get on why he's a little bit creepy, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> um, and then um, there is um, basically Jonathan's evil uncle, who nobody really suspects is evil except for Elena. Everybody loves her uncle, his uncle, Roger is his Roger name. Roger of Kant. <laughs> um, and yeah. I always thought it was Conde. Ah, uh, whatever. D whatever! It's, yeah, I don't care. We don't like him. <laughs> Con and just sounds like something else to me. <laughs> I <You> think? <laughs> okay, and so as the series progresses, she goes through <coughs> challenges. So Roger is trying to knock off Jonathan. Um, eventually, Alana does kill Roger, and she becomes a knight. She goes off on adventures. Um, she also meets George. Um, who is the Prince of Thieves, and she meets him when she's young, and he kind of helps her out. He's, like, one of the first people to realize that she's a girl. Um, and so he, he falls in love with her, like, like, fairly quickly. Yeah. Because the books compress, like, eight They're years very, into... very, very short, and it's a very large amount of time. Yeah, and it's, yeah. So, anyways, he falls in love with her. Um, she's just kind of like, no. Um, she falls in love with Jonathan. They sleep together. Um, but anyway, so she kills Roger. She goes off and has her night adventures. And when she comes back, she realizes that her brother has resurrected Roger. Because... Reasons! Because somebody told him he couldn't. He was not capable of doing it. So he did. And her brother's supposed to be very, very powerful. And he just, he just did it. Just because. Just... I don't know. And anyway, so she comes back and she figures out that, hey, look, I killed this guy. I got rid of the problem. And you know what? He's back. I have to kill him off freaking again because he's obviously up to something. Roger was a very powerful mage and he was powerful before death and he's supposedly not powerful now, but he's clearly up to shit. Um, her brother ends up dying. Um, she has a relationship with another guy who's we will also get into him. His name is Liam. He was a like a shang, dragon, a shang dragon, um, which means he's like he could kill you with his, his pinky. Yeah. Um, and she breaks up with Jonathan. She also discovers the queen, um, who's <sighs> running from her land. So she kind of sets him and Jonathan up. Um, she kills Roger of Conte, who was just went on this big thing and he was trying to just destroy the world because apparently he went crazy. I'll get into that too. And then she basically settles down a little bit not like settles down but she yes george i will marry you she says yeah she'll marry george after years of chasing him or him and chasing, chasing her, her and she's kind of confident in who she is now getting into things like why the hell would you bring back roger which we have filmed an entire <laughs> video about <laughs> Because it just <laughs> drove us nuts. So we will link that in the description because if we get started on that again, we're not going to get anything else. Um, but yeah, somebody dared him to bring back the most evil man in like the most recent years and he did. And no, we couldn't figure out what his motivation was. Yeah, that was the thing that we, we, we didn't do. We, it just happened. He was just like, I'm evil. I'm creating earthquakes and something, something. And... We couldn't figure out what his motivation was. Later, we read somewhere that, oh, he's just wanting to destroy the world because he's crazy. 
And you know, eh, the fact that neither of us got that. Like, you, you kind of assume, you're like, I guess he's just crazy, but that's just kind of the reason you substitute because you have no other reason. Yeah. And it turns out it was the right one. So, yeah. And anyways. Let's talk about relationships. Oh. Alana's three big relationships. Jonathan, George, and Liam. <laughs> so... Jonathan definitely, when I started the books, I really wanted her to end up with Jonathan because their relationship at the very beginning is really, really cute because they're best friends as kids. And then it... <coughs> they, they, they have sex because they do. Just just tell them what he says, Chelsea. It was this really weird moment and you kind of gloss over it because it doesn't strike you. But when you paraphrase what he says, you're like, what kind of come on is that? Because... She goes, she talks to George's mother, and she, George's mother gives her a charm against pregnancy because, like, just be, be safe, yeah. right? Like, you don't want kids right now. So here you go. And so Jonathan sees it, and they're, like, out in the gardens, and he's like, so what's this? And she's like, oh, it's a charm against pregnancy. And he's like, so you want to test that out? Huh? 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 And you're like, and then they do, and you're like, and so their relationship is actually really cute and sweet, and I love it. And then all of a sudden, there is a dog. Okay, keep talking. All of a sudden, Jonathan just basically says to her that, oh, we're, when we get married, you are going to take that off, and you're marrying me, and this is what's going to happen, and this is your future, and na 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 And she's just like, no, Jonathan, that's not what I want. And Jonathan's just like, but you're going to marry me, and we're going to be happy, and I'm going to, can like... And Nice. Control and I'm just like respect just diminishing <laughs> and then of course she like she sell, tells him no and he gets all mad and she gets all mad and it's a huge fight and she leaves where she is and she goes to George and I'm just like <gasps> George because the, the thing about George is he like yeah okay he's like an enigmatic character and he doesn't really have any flaws but. The, the one thing he does is he accept, ex, bleh, accepts Alana for exactly who she is. Mm -hmm. He knows she's a girl, and... He knows that she's not a, a lady. In their terms, at least. And he's like, yeah, go have your adventures, go have your funs. I love, like, I love that about you. And he, he just gives her exactly what she needs. Um, and that's, in like, in comparison to... Our good asshole friend Liam, who he's really respectful of her at first because he respects her knightness and her fightingness. And Alana realizes that she wants to be able to do lady things. She wants to wear pretty dresses. She wants to just... She, she, she wants to just be herself, mm -hmm. which is not somebody who wants to be a man, but she also wants to be a knight. She's kind of redefining... Gender roles in the society. And just for her sake alone, too. And... So they're out, she's off with the group and Liam's there and she comes down in a dress because, you know, they're, they're staying in a tavern, they don't really need to, she doesn't need to be armed. He takes one look at her and is just like, no. I, ca I can't deal with you no. being delicate and, like, and he also can't accept her magic, which yeah. is, like, because Atlanta originally couldn't accept the magic part about her. She thought, she felt like it was cheating to use the gifts that she had and Liam just can't accept it and... It's it's interesting the relationship because he loves her, but it's almost borderline like I wouldn't say the word abusive, but manipulative. Lative. Yeah, and like they were good for a time, but it like you can see why it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about these relationships is they seem very natural. Like okay, so you start out with your first boyfriend, and you know it's you're great gonna, for a time, but then you want different things, and you think you're gonna last forever, but you know that's not what happens. And then you meet someone, and you just can't accept each other for who you are, and and you love each other, and it's great, but ultimately you want to end up with the person who is just Likes accepts you, you for who you. you are and makes you happy, and that's who she ends up with. Um, there's so much going on in these books. Alana is just, like, the stuff of legends, literally and figuratively. She just, she does so much. Like, she kills Roger. She brings back a jewel that now can help Jonathan, like, defend the land and makes them more powerful. She finds the queen and rescues the queen. She just goes and goes and goes. And the really interesting thing I found about her is that 
because no one knows that she is a girl in the beginning, she doesn't have anything to prove to anyone. Mm -hmm. They're just like, oh, you're a page, whatever. But she is proving this stuff to herself. Mm -hmm. Like, she's like, I need to go get this magical jewel because I need to prove that I'm as good as any man. And then she goes and she does it, which just wonderful. Um, what else? Faithful. Oh, faithful. So in the second book, she's returning from like a mission and she finds this little black kitten, which definitely struck really close to home for me <laughs> because I have a little black kitten and she names his cat Faithful and you know, he rides on her saddle and he speaks to her like they, they, un they understand but the cat can... the, the cat is not a normal cat. And... He's a constellation. Yeah. He's literally a constellation. I'm not even joking. I know. <laughs> so like he kind of motivates her to do stuff and and then in the last book he like sacrifices himself for her and I'm just like she just killed the cat <laughs> the oh cat. my god <laughs> it's just heartbreaking and then and then at the end of the like like there's a there's now a cat constellation in the sky and I'm just like oh my god no don't do this to me George <laughs> come here <laughs> She, she just sees, like, Faithful's body is on a table, and she's like, I got to go do things. And I'm like, put the kid the cat! It was kind of like, they killed Finnick! <laughs> it's just like, no! You've, like, at first I was like, oh, I don't really like the whole cat, like, <coughs> like the magical animal companion stereotype. And then I, like, he Faithful dies, and I'm like, why are you doing this to me? Uh, she, she, she kind of... Like, it's the stereotype, but it's not so stereotypical. The cat just does some pretty interesting stuff. It, like, you the grow, cat, like, just... You grow, to, you grow to love it. Like, just becomes another character that you're just like... You like Faithful because he keeps Alana in line. Yeah. And it's just like, of course you can do that. No, don't do that. Come on. <laughs> think. Think about this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Another really interesting thing about this series, and it comes into play more in the next books, but... The gods in this book, they're they're not just like oh I'm going to pray to the priest like the the female god for vitality and God knows if I ever hear about that again. Um, the gods in this book actually are entities that you can interact with, and they do pop up more and more through the series. But Alana is chosen of the great mother goddess, and so she kind of is given like she. She's given help by this goddess, and mm -hmm. it's just, it provides, like, a really interesting backdrop. Like, it just helps to make her more, like, mythical and mm -hmm. more awesome. Um, there's just so much going on in these series. The last thing I want to talk about is the relationship with Sir Miles. Because um... I know that it's, I hadn't read these books when I was younger. And I think my reaction, my first reaction to Miles would have been completely different. I would have been more accepting. But Miles is this drunken knight who's, he's very smart. He like, he's one of their history teachers, but he's just, he's drunk all the time. Like, at parties, he drinks too much. And he favors Elena. And he's just like, hey, Elena, why don't, well, hey, Alan, why don't you come visit my house for two weeks? At and, my summer home, away from everyone. And I'm just like, no. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Do not get on that horse. Stop it. No. Come. Bad things are going to happen. <laughs> now, truth be told, the character is really loving and he adopts her and he's... He's like, uh, he just becomes the father the she father never she had. The father she never had. And I, and I know that if I was a kid, my mind wouldn't have like jumped onto that. I would have been like, oh, it's like Dumbledore and Harry. No. <laughs> No, you know what, you're not alone, because even though I know Miles is, like, perfectly innocent, I was reading it, and I'm like, nope, this strikes me as bad, this is bad. and I, I'm pretty sure when I read it, like, in high school, I was reading it, too, and I was, like, a little, like, mm -hmm. And this is the, the example of lack of innocence, the lot, lack of childhood whimsy. But, I mean, like, what does that say? I mean, like, just a better society, I guess, that would, like, I guess like, he's drunk, but... Otherwise, he never did anything that was like, I know. meant to put you at at either disease, and you're just automatically suspicious. We're all taught not to talk to strangers. <laughs> Strange men. It's interesting, anyways. Not that we're... Yeah. Anyway. So, for the first 
series we're looking at in Tomorrow Appears Month, we started on a very high note. We're moving on to the Immortals next. Which is my favorite. Which is her favorite. So far, I'm really liking this one. This is... I have, on, I have only read, one. technically, this and... Um, Allie. Allie. So, Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. So, I am wading in with no information. So, this is going to be fun for me. We're going to do a video on my psychosis right now. <laughs> um, but, yes. Um, so, we're going to hope to see you next week. We hope our long review didn't just put you off because... I love this series and I can't stop talking about it. And while we remember, if you have any questions or any topics you want us to cover for tomorrow Pierce Month, tell us. We have time. We have so much time. Don't, but we'll do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, the reading list is posted on the Intro to Tomorrow Pierce video. So read with us! Yay! See you guys later. <laughs>